Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and the livestock to do the same. Fash Following me and sharing me is really important. I am a small one-man shop with absolutely no money for advertising, and so social media is how I grow. So please follow me on Twitter at SYLTales and any other uh, social media I'm on every single one known to man. I would also appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. In Star Trek Picard, we are presented with a situation that is completely out of character for the United Federation of Planets and its people. It is the Federation abandoning an entire civilization to die. We're told this because this is due to political expediency, since the race involved are the Romulans, one of the Federation's oldest enemies, when Starfleet no longer has the government resources for assistance, the Federation just abandons them. Now, it's also stated that a number of member worlds of the Federation, 14 to be precise, were threatening to secede if the Romulans got any Federation government assistance. This goes completely against all previous Federation history, very specifically the Klingons. In Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, the Klingons experienced a catastrophe which would end all life on their home planet in only 50 years. Yet, despite there having been unrelenting hostilities between the Federation and the Klingons for over 70 years, the Federation immediately offered its assistance. Now, this would lead to a broader peace with the Klingons and an outright alliance with the Federation by the era of Star Trek The Next Generation. Furthermore, the Romulans had been a, uh, a Federation ally in the recent Dominion War, and at the end of the last Next Generation era film, Star Trek Nemesis, it was stated explicitly that the events of that film had brought the Romulans to the negotiating table. Additionally, Ambassador Spock had been a resident of Romulus for several decades, working to reunite the Romulan and Vulcan people. In short, this whole premise doesn't make any sense. But what the hell, you know, let's just throw out all the inconsistencies and the common sense, and we'll go with what was shown on screen. Starfleet and the Federation government abandoning the Romulans doesn't mean that there would be no rescue effort. So let's just take it as given. Synthetics from Mars, so they destroyed Mars. Um, because most of the fleet that they were assembling was at the Utopia Planitia shipyards on Mars, they were destroyed. Starfleet just said, frack it, you Romulans can all just die for all we care. And that 14 worlds threatened to secede if the Federation government itself gave Romulan assistance. And we're now presented in later episodes with some notion that perhaps the Romulan secret police may have had a hand in undermining things. Okay, fine, we'll take all of that as a given. In 2267, about 120 years before the destruction of Romulus, James Kirk described the Federation, and I quote him here as, a thousand planets and spreading out. With that many planets, which must be composed of trillions or even quadrillions of individuals, it's not a requirement that the Federation government get involved in a rescue mission. Two words, Cajun Navy. Now, if you don't know, the Cajun Navy is an all-volunteer group that assists in natural disasters, typically hurricanes or floods along the Gulf Coast of the United States. It come, consists of anyone with a boat or another kind of vehicle or tools that would be useful in a natural disaster, and they operate totally independently of government. They are 100% volunteers. In a federation of a thousand worlds, quadrillions of individuals, there will be millions, tens of millions, perhaps hundreds of millions of private spacecraft owned by private individuals. In a federation of that size, even the number of freighters must be so large that it would boggle the imagination. At least some of those freighter captains would just say, hey, dump the cargo, set a course for Romulus, we need to help you guys out. Some of the cargo freighters and their captains would be carrying things like food, water, clothing, medical supplies, all kinds of things that Romulans would need in order to evacuate. 
And some of those ships would be things like tenders, on-site repair ships, something that can be used in lieu of a dry dock in an emergency situation. And these ships would, by definition, have industrial-sized replicators, which could mass-produce all kinds of food, water, clothing, medical supplies, and anything that refugees from Romulus might need. This is the enlightened 24th century. Even if one of Starfleet's main production facilities were destroyed, there would be millions upon millions of regular Joes who would happily spend the next few years ferrying Romulan refugees. Picard's last desperate wild solution should have been to help organize and or command the civilian-led evacuation of Romulus. The fact that the viewers would buy the idea that Starfleet alone could mount a rescue and no one else could is symptomatic of the growing rise of socialism and communism in the United States. Everyone has begun to expect that government must do everything, and so if government doesn't do it, it won't get done. Well, that is utter ridiculousness, and the existence of the Cajun Navy proves it. If the Romulan Empire were essentially destroyed, it's an absolute certainty that independent, non-governmental, non-federation, free individuals would use their personally owned spacecraft to help out. Don't depend on government for everything. It is not your only option. If you think it is, just look to history and to modern day just to prove, broaden your mind and prove it. Government can't and doesn't do everything for you. Do not depend on it to do so. And that is all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.